way that we're going to create trees in Maya is very simple, and these are pre-designed trees, okay? They have lots of attributes that I won't be able to get a chance to go over with you, but I will talk about some of them. We go to Windows, General Editors, you have this thing called a Content Browser. So we click on that, and you can see all sorts of pre-designed objects and models. For the sake of our projects, we're not going to add any sort of these props because it won't look um, like it fits in the scene. But you do have a prop that says leafless tree. So if I wanted to use that, I'll middle mouse button, drag and drop into my scene. And there you go. Now I'll press R to scale it down. Okay, and I'll teach you how to create a tree like this from scratch. It's actually really easy. It's a little time consuming, but the concept is easy. So you have this kind of tree here, all right? And then you also have underneath the paint effects, things like trees and tree mesh. Okay, the tree mesh is actually going to have some sort of animation to it. So if you press play in the time slider, they will move. So I'm going to click on something like Oak Autumn. Oak Autumn. A middle mouse, drag and drop. And it doesn't do the same exact thing, but it will give me this red dot at the tip of my cursor that it, probably can't see. See a little red dot there? If I click and drag, it's creating like this tree. You see? But it's so tiny. If I want to create a larger tree, I simply hold B, left mouse click and drag, and now that becomes larger. And I don't have to make a huge selection when I drag, if I just go like that, it will create the tree. Okay, If I wanted a different tree, like Oak Forest, I just click on it, drag, and you can see it, it created these, um, these polygon planes. If I were to render that, it's actually going to be an image on here like a PNG image so let me show you software and I'll render you see that it's an oak forest so this is kind of desirable in some cases where you don't want to have a lot of polygons in your scene like something really heavy like this, but you want to have something off in the background, you would use that technique. However, that's not what we're going to be using um, as of yet. Okay. And then we have the, uh, you have like palm trees. So you can pick and choose which trees will work in your environment. Okay. The rendering engine that we will use is uh, Arnold. So if I go to Arnold and click on Render View, you'll notice that obviously nothing is showing up because we don't have a light source. So I'm going to create a simple, um, let's go to Physical Sky. All right? I'm going to create a simple Physical Sky. I click on Arnold, Arnold Render View. And Let's click on that object, and I'm going to increase the exposure to something like 2. I'll click View, and then Refresh Render. Now you can actually see my geometry, right? You can see my geometry. Now the issue that's happening is, I can see, let me just run an IPR. Let's go to, 
I can see this mesh here, but I can't see my paint effects. The reason why I can't see it is because it's not a polygon. All right, so let me close this and hide that. So once you create your desired tree, we have to turn it into a polygon, okay? So I would suggest that you use a few trees versus 20, so a few meaning five minimum. So after you have your desired tree, okay, we have to go into your attribute editor which is a shortcut control A and in your attribute editor there's a tab here that says mesh output okay so when we convert this NURBS object into a polygon we want it to be a quad okay that's the, one of the biggest things that you want to do so I'll do the same thing with this object output quads Okay. The second step is after we have our tree selected, we want to go to modify, convert, paint effects to polygon option box. Okay. In the option box of our convert paint effects to polys, we want to make sure that the output quad is turned on, a quad output, and I always like to change a poly, poly limit to something really low before I go extremely high. Right now it's set to a hundred thousand faces for this object and that's a little bit too much for me and it also will result in a very slow and pricey render. So let's start off by something like 500 and I'm going to click apply not convert so you can see what happened immediately is that I lost a lot of detail in this object. So I'll right mouse click just to activate this window and press Z to undo. And then I'll start to double that number. So let's try a thousand. Apply. Uh, still doesn't look good. I'll right mouse click in my viewport, press Z to undo. I'll change that to 2000 closer. So again, I'll right mouse click my viewport so I can activate it and press Z to undo. And let's try 4000. All right, that looks good. Okay, I still have a lot of the detail that I had before. And now look what happens when I go to Arnold and I click on Arnold render view. Let's see here. Let me go to my outliner and turn on my dome shape that I turned off. And let's refresh. Actually, it's running IPR. So now you can see this shape. All right, you can see the this object. Okay. Now we haven't applied any sort of shading network to it. That's why it's got this really reflective shape. It kind of looks like something a thrift store <laughs> from the 70s. But that's, that's the idea, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing with this object. So this object here will actually have more poly count than the other. And again, you have to remember, you have to go to the attribute editor or shortcut is control A go to mesh output and turn on the output quads. So let's go to modify, convert, paint effects to poly option box. We make sure that the output quad is turned on and I'll start off at 4,000. Now you can see we lost a lot of detail in that tree. So I'll right mouse click in the viewport to activate it. Press Z to undo. I'll change that to 8,000 apply still losing a little bit of detail I'll try 10,000 I don't think I need double 8,000 so that looks good and 
what it did is that it separates the tree leaves from the tree trunk. Okay? And if I wanted to move this object, you can see that my manipulator tool is at the center of Maya. I like to call it Maya's belly button. It's like down there. If I press the up arrow on my keyboard, it actually selects the entire group, which is the trunk as well. I'll go to modify center pivot. And there we go. And then I'll hold D and I'll move it down in the Y axis so that the manipulator tool is directly underneath the tree trunk. I'll press R to scale it down like this. I'll press W and I can hold V and actually snap it to any point in my scene. So I'll press R, I'll do that. Press W, I'll move it over here. And once you have a few trees, it probably is going to be easy for you to get a better understanding of where you want to place them. Maybe you're right at the edge of the sand dunes, right, like a transition. If you wanted to, let's say, duplicate that tree, you can. And maybe you rotate that, it a little bit so it doesn't look the same in your camera's per, um, perspective. Right? So you don't want them to look exactly the same. So again, I'll click on the leaf group and press the up arrow and rotate it. Now, like I was explaining to you earlier, that under Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, the trees that you have in here, you have things like bamboo, birch blowing, birch light, you have tree bear. So let's go ahead and click on that. And I'll hold B and I'll draw it. So it looks like it placed it over here. I'll press W. And I'll move this guy over here. Actually, I'll go to Modify Center Pivot. And we still have to turn this object into a polygon. Okay? So one more last time. I'll click on the stroke shape, mesh output, change it to output quads, modify, convert, paint effects to poly option box. I'll start off at a low value, press apply, press undo until I get a value that has a lot of the detail in that shape. 5,000 I'm getting closer. Let's try 8,000. Apply, and there we go. So since this doesn't have any sort of... Oh, look, there's a few tubes that I lost. The... Actually, no, I didn't lose the uh, detail on that. So it's... The convert. Okay. So there's no leaves on this, but I want to still go to modify center pivot. I'll hold D and uh, so it doesn't want to move it where I want it to. So you can do this, move it down. And maybe you got some dead trees in the background. All right, so just make the nice transition from one uh, part of your floating island to the next. And in the next tutor tutorial, I'll teach you how to create your own, like, modified or your own um, design, your own type of trees, uh, without using the content browser. All right, so with the time that you have now, go ahead and open up the content browser, and let's start searching for tree types that are going to work out for you.